Okay, remember earlier at the start of this unit, this section, we looked at how you could have a point on the terminal side of an angle. That point would have an X and a Y coordinate. You could determine the length of this segment from the origin to that point by using the distance formula. And if I superimpose a picture on that, that circle right there, you could think of, of this segment as being the radius of the circle. And then we talked about how sine, cosine, and tangent could be defined by looking at the y coordinate over the radius for sine, x over the radius for cosine, or y over x for tangent. We also did the reciprocal functions, but um, you know you just need to flip over each of those, and, and we could do that. Uh, but we just we did that earlier. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you of this. Okay, well, interesting thing that we're going to do is we're going to shrink or expand the size of our circle so that it's very specifically a circle with a radius of one unit because that's going to simplify things quite a bit. So right now the circle has a radius of r, whatever r is. Um, but it turns out that if you're trying to do the sine, cosine, or tangent of this angle right here, the size of the circle doesn't really matter. Just like when we were doing our right triangle trig, you know, whether you're looking at that size triangle or that size triangle, when you're trying to do the sine, cosine, or tangent of theta, it doesn't matter which of these triangles you use, they're similar triangles, the ratios of the sides would be proportional. So because trig functions are ratios, okay, you don't really have to uh, worry about the radius of the circle or the size, the specific size of your triangle, you could look at a triangle that was similar but bigger and it would have the same value for the sine, cosine, and tangent of theta. Okay, So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a circle that has a radius of one unit. That's what makes it called a unit circle. Right? What's really good about that is the measure of the central angle in radians. If you're measuring the angle in radians, turns out to be equal to the length of the intercepted arc, okay? All right, so what that means is, okay, so here's a circle. Then if we had some angle we were looking at, that means that we could think about this length some real number representing the length of this arc rather than thinking about an angle. We could use the length of an arc and do the sine, cosine, or tangent of that real number rather than having to think about it as an angle with a certain amount of rotation. Okay, And then if you're dealing with a, a unit circle, then the measure of the central angle and the measure of the intercepted arc are exactly the same. Okay, The length of the intercepted arc and the measure of the angle in radians is the same exact thing. So what we're going to do is when we're thinking about that point right there, which has coordinates x, y for this point, we're going to think about how that point is at the end of this intercepted arc. So it's, it's like the length of that arc that we're going to be doing the sine, cosine, or um, tangent for. So here's how it works. Okay, let me try to draw the, or make sure you understand it based on the picture. So T is going to be this real number, okay? And that real number is going to be this length of this arc. That the point that we're talking about, point XY, is going to be that point right there on the unit circle that corresponds to T. So it's right there at the end when you finish drawing that intercepted arc. Okay, Then you can wind up doing the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of T, where you're thinking about T as being some real number rather than some angle. So it's really just semantics. It's really the same idea. It's just uh, we're thinking about it in terms of the length of an arc rather than the measure of an angle. So if this is a unit circle, 
So this is a unit circle. Okay. Then watch what's going to happen. When we used to do sine, we did y over the radius, right? We did y over r. But on a unit circle, r is 1. And so we'd have just the sine of t being y. Same with cosine. Cosine was x over r, but on a unit circle, r would be 1. So the cosine of t would just be x. And then tangent will stay like it was before. You're going to do y over x, and that won't change. Okay. And then, of course, if we did cosecant, we would just do the reciprocal of sine, but it would be 1 over y because it's a unit circle, so r is 1. And then secant goes with cosine, so it would be 1 over x. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so you just flip over those. And so it's like we're just redefining the trig functions, kind of simplifying them a little bit. And notice that the sine of t, the sine of t turned out to be the y-coordinate. See, that was the sine of t. And how the cosine of t turned out to be the x-coordinate. Okay, so that's kind of a nice discovery. All right, so you want to get to where you can work with a unit circle when you're doing trig functions of angles. Okay, so let's take a look at um, how to construct a unit circle and then we'll see how it might help us. Okay, so first let's work on just constructing the unit circle to figuring out what the values of uh, sine and cosine would be on a unit circle. Okay, so first off, it, it really helps to focus on this first quadrant over here. And earlier we had labeled, we had um, worked on determining the degree measure all the way around on a circle, and then also determining what the radial, radian measure would be at each of these spots. Okay, I'm gonna do in, in red, I'm gonna do the 45s, kind of outline them in red, kind of color coded. If you can, color code yours as well. Okay, and then we're going to look at the others. Maybe I'll just use that light blue. Kind of focus on these. Kind of in blue. Okay. All right. And then um, what we're going to do is come out here and we're going to write what the coordinates of these points would be. And we're going to be able to figure them out because we're going to be able to take and superimpose a special right triangle on this diagram. Okay, so there'll be 45, 45, 90, or there'll be 30, 60, 90. And you'll be able to think about the ratios in those special triangles to determine what, what the coordinates of the points are going to be. Okay. All right, so let's get those triangles labeled. So let's do the 45, 45, 90. Let me do that one in red. Okay, so this is my 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the ratios of the sides are 1, 1 squared to 2. These two triangles are both 30, 60, 90, but you got to be careful about where the degrees are. Okay, make sure you've got the smallest angle being 30 smallest acute angle being 30. And so 1 is opposite the smallest one, 2 is the hypotenuse, and square root of 3 is the other side. Okay? All right, so you see this triangle right here is here. This would be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This would be 30. Okay? All right, and then this is, this is 30 right here. Okay? Then this one is 45. Okay, and then this one is 60 degrees, okay? All right, so let's think about this then. So you should be focused, you should be looking at this triangle and this orientation right here when you think about it, okay? So when you're looking at that and you're thinking about cosine, it would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and cosine is the x-coordinate of the point on a unit circle. So we're on a unit circle, Cosine should be x-coordinate of the point. The sine would be 1 over, the, over 2. 
and that should be the y coordinate. Okay, so if you can label these, then you know the, the cosine and the sine of a 30 degree angle. Okay. All right, if we go to a 45, cosine is 1 over the square root of 2, but you have to rationalize that. So that would be square root of 2 over 2 when you rationalize it. And sine would also be 1 over the square root of 2, which would be square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And you see that 45, 45, 90 kind of superimposed inside the unit circle. Okay. And then this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but this is the 60. Up here is the 30. That would be 30. This is the 60 down here. Okay, so when you're looking at that one, see how the X of that is this shorter side? You know, we're looking at this one here. So on this one, you're going to have a 1 half for the cosine, and you're going to have square root of 3 over 2 for the sine of it. Okay. All right, now let's take a moment before we go any further and get the coordinates of the quadrantal angles. So let me go ahead and just do those in maybe green or something. I meant to do those first, but let's go in here and do these quadrantal angles. Okay. All right, it's a unit circle, don't forget that. So that means if you're over here, your X is one, your Y is zero. Here, your x is 0, your y is 1. Here, you have negative 1, 0 being the coordinates of that point. Okay. And down here, you're at 0, negative 1. So that tells you that if you did sine of 270, it would be negative 1. Okay. Or if you did cosine of 180, it would be negative 1. You just got to associate cosine with the x coordinate and sign with the y coordinate. As long as you're on a unit circle, that's going to hold true. All right, so then the question is, well, how do we then go and fill out the rest of these? Okay. Well, to fill out the rest of them, you just kind of have to think about where your points are relative to these three key points in the first quadrant. Okay, so let's do all the red ones. So see over here, down here, and over here in the fourth quadrant? All of those should have the square root of 2 over 2 on them, okay? But we're going to have to potentially put a negative in front of some piece of it, okay? So we know these are going to have the same cosine and sine as the 45, because the 45 degree angle would be the reference angle for all three of those. But then we look at, hey, when I'm in the second quadrant, do you see how I have to go to the left? So that means cosine is negative. Let me make that a little bigger so I can really show that, show that negative that I want to show. Okay. So cosine is going to be negative, but see how it's up, so sine is positive. Okay, when I'm in the third quadrant, see how I had to go to the left, so cosine is negative, and down, so the y coordinate or sine is also negative. Okay, and then this. An, an angle that winds up being here would have a reference angle of 45 degrees. So that means you should see square root of 2 over 2. I just wrote that wrong right there. Square root of 2 over 2. But then I need to decide on the signs. Since it's to the right, I know cosine is positive, And down means sine is negative. So if you know, if you can remember the first quadrant, then you just adjust and put positives or negatives on the ordered pairs that are related to that. Okay, so now look here. Look at these angles. Okay, let me let me do a, a blue, the certain blue one's kind of bigger. That's supposed to be blue, it looks green. Okay, blue right there. And see that angle and this angle. Okay, so this point and that point have the same reference angle, okay? And then so would this one and this one. Their reference angles would all be 30 degrees. So what that means is they should have the same values, absolute values, as these, the same number parts as these, but we just have to adjust for positives and negatives. So in that quadrant, the Y coordinate is negative. So this point and this point, Okay, 
would both have the same reference angle. So 30 is the reference angle for this. And I had to go to the left, so cosine should be negative, And the sine should be positive. Here, my x coordinate should be negative, And so should my y coordinate. Okay, So that's kind of how you get it all filled in. All right, let me see if I can get a, another color. Let's do purple. Okay, so let me let purple be these guys because they're related. I wish I had drawn that in purple originally. Okay, so these guys. Okay, so like this angle, the angle that has a terminal side there, would have the same reference angle as this one. Okay, or this one or this one, okay? They would all have the reference angle of 60 degrees, all right? Well, what that means is they should have the same cosine and sine as the 60 degree angle in the first quadrant. It's just that if you're in the fourth quadrant, your Y coordinate has to be negative, okay? All right, and then if you're over here, You're still going to have the 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2, but your x should be negative. If you're in the third quadrant, both your x and your y should be negative. Okay, so now we filled in all the spots on the unit circle, so that's going to make it a whole lot easier when we need to find the value of a trig function of a certain angle. All right, let's look at a couple of examples of that. By the way, you want to practice recreating the unit circle without just uh, memorizing it completely, but being able to derive it yourself, kind of figure out what all the ordered pairs should be, the key ordered pairs should be around the edge of that. Make sure you understand kind of those relationships that I showed you. Okay, make sure you're thinking about the angles that should have the same reference angle and in, in how the ordered pairs then look basically the same, okay? This looks the same as that, that, and that. The only difference is what the sign, what the, whether you put a positive or negative in front of those coordinates, okay? All right, so let's take a look then at, um, at number seven and eight. I just wanted to be able to move my paper down a little bit. Okay, so point P on the unit circle corresponding to T has coordinates negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay, and so you want to find the values of all the trig functions at T. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to take this information. You're going to find out where you are. Okay, so you're going to go back up, and because of it looking like a 30, 60, 90, I know it's going to be related to either a 30 or a 60 degree. Because it's negative, followed by a positive, I know I'm in the second quadrant. And so I go and identify that I'm right here, right? Okay, so I can do that. I can see that. All right, but in reality, if I know that I'm on a unit circle, and those are what the coordinates turned out to be, then I know that the cosine of t would be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, that sine of t would be 1 half. If I needed to do secant of t, I would just flip that over. It would be negative 2 over the square root of 3, and then I would rationalize it. And if I needed cosecant of t, I would just flip over 1 half. That would be 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay. All right. Now, tangent for tangent of t, you might want to remember one of those identities we had earlier. Tangent of t is equal to the sine of t over the cosine of t. And if you're on a unit circle, remember how that's just your y over your x like we defined tangent before. So it's 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay. All right, a little bit of algebra work here. 
I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2 on both of those. And I'm going to wind up with 1 on top and square root of 3 on the bottom, and it's going to be negative. Okay, I still have to rationalize it, and this is getting kind of messy. So I think I'm going to just um, pull this problem down to the next page and do it over again okay, with a little more space. Okay. All right, so let's let's redo that one. Just kind of spread it out a little bit. I just kind of erase what I've done so far, and we'll just kind of talk it through again. See if I can clear that up a little bit. Okay. All right. No. Nope. Okay. So, um, what I'm thinking here is that this is a point on a unit circle, okay? So since that's a point on the unit circle, I know that the x and the y coordinate actually are giving me the sine of t and the cosine of t. Only let me do it in the right order, cosine first. Ah, dang it. Okay, so this would be cosine of t followed by the sine of t, right? All right, so that means we know the cosine of t. It's negative square root of 3 over 2. And we know the sine of t. It's 1 half. Okay. We could get the secant of t by taking the reciprocal. It would still be a negative, and we'd have to rationalize it. And we could get the cosecant of t by taking the reciprocal. It would just be positive 2. All right, then when we go to do tangent of t, tangent is sine over cosine. And if you're on the unit circle, that's just the y coordinate over the x coordinate, like we heard before. And then here's where the algebra came in that I was trying to show you. It's a, a complex fraction. So I'm going to get rid of those denominators by multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. And that gets me to negative 1 over square root of 3. But i got to rationalize it, so I'll do that. And my final answer would be negative square root of 3 over 3. Okay. And then if I needed cotangent theta, or cotangent t, what I'm going to do is go back to this spot and take the reciprocal of it which would be negative square root of 3 over 1, negative square root of 3, okay? All right, so the important thing to remember is that if you're on a unit circle and you have a point on the unit circle, the x coordinate and the y coordinate actually give you the cosine of t and the sine of t, okay? And those are basically the length of the arc but it's equal to the measure of the central angle. So all those ideas are kind of stuck together and you should, should relate them in your mind. All right, now this is problem number eight, really. So let me go make sure that so had an eight on it earlier. Weird. Eight. Okay, I don't know why it switches. Okay, so this is number eight. Use the unit circle to find the values of the trig functions at t equals pi over two. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to be on the unit circle. And if you're on the unit circle, t equaling pi over two is actually the length of this arc right here. Okay. So pi over 2 is right here, and it's the length of this arc. But because it's a unit circle, it's equal to the measure of that angle. So you can think about it either way that you're more comfortable with. Okay, so we want the sine of pi over 2. We want the cosine and so on. Tangent. Okay, and then we want, I'll line them up over here, cosecant. Secant and cotangent, okay? So if we could figure out the 
coordinates of that point right there, we will use those. And so that point is a point on the y-axis. It's the point 0, 1, x of 0, y of 1. So your sine pi over 2 should be the y-coordinate. Cosine should be the x-coordinate. Tangent should be sine over cosine, so it's undefined. Cosecant should be 1 over 1, which is 1. Secant should be 1 over 0, so that's undefined. And then cotangent should be 0 over 1, which equals 0. Okay. All right, so we just looked at how to, how to create a unit circle, like where it came from. So you don't really just memorize the unit circle. You really work at being able to understand the connections between it and the special right triangles and the connection between okay, what happens over here in the first quadrant and how you get the corresponding points in the other three quadrants. So you really want to work hard on this part right here. Don't take shortcuts. Make sure you're really reasoning this out and able to explain how to get um, the unit circle derived so that when you're asked to do a trig function of some angle that you can do it without having to just resort to your calculator. Okay, So make sure you're working on the homework and working to make sense of it.